How's it going, boys? It's me, your favorite snake holes merchant. And let me ask you a question. Are you being mind controlled? Well, most of you are probably gonna say, of course not. That would be preposterous. Well, the truth may actually shock you. Today we're not gonna be talking about the movie style of mind control that you see where someone is just a zombie that does everything that someone tells them to. No, even though that probably most likely is 100% real thing that most governments in the world have already learned to use. You think I'm crazy? Well, <clears throat> in that case, you most, most likely do not know about the strange magical plant that I think grows in Colombia on pretty much every street. If you grind the fruit of that uh, that plant in a found fine powder or something, and you literally just make someone inhale it, they will be 100% subservient to all suggestions, and the kicker is they won't even be able to remember what happened. Oh yes, that's a real thing. You you can most likely Google and YouTube it and find it. It's a pre it's a pre pre neat little thing. And please try to tell me that governments all over, all over the world have not tried to weaponize it at the bare minimum. I would assume that that's like already a weaponized thing. But now today we're gonna be talking about the more dangerous style of mind control that is being implemented all around the world in recent years. In the information era, information is power, and that is honestly the most truest sentence you will hear ever. You see, mind control is pretty easy. It is essentially just the concept of making someone think about X, and then everything that comes with it. And of course I am talking about the social medias and the everythings. You think when you go on Twitter, when you see what's trending, it's, a, it's what the people are talking about, right? No. That is literally what Twitter decides that people should see, should watch, and what they should speak about. And that is a form of mind control. Because people are not gonna question it. People are herd animals, and they like to do what everyone else likes to do. For example, if, so, if they think something is popular, they're gonna also start doing it. And it doesn't matter if it wasn't uh, it, if it was not an organic popular thing. As long as people start to do it, it happens. And that's exactly what happens when you control the information, what people get to see, and uh, what people think. When someone thinks X is popular, X will become popular if that's the only news source that people get, because they don't literally see anything else. And that is the danger. And you might think, wait. That's kind of harmless to a degree, right? Well, that's where you're extremely wrong, kiddo. You see, the suggestion does not need to be a radical in any way. The, su uh, the suggestion can be something sublime and something easy. And as long as people follow it, it means that people are going to do certain things that are associated with it. For example, if something comes out really bad about the governments, about the whatevers, or something like that, what happens? People hear, hear about it, they go on Twitter because they want to see what happens. They want to go on Facebook to read what people are talking about it. But surprise, surprise, well, none of the hashtags actually reflect that. So, you instantaneously think, well, no one actually cares about the fact that this person is completely insane, but still in the government and doing X things, and all of those things are bad. Maybe it's not actually that bad. Also, sites, Twitter, Facebook, and everyone else can boost the exact opposite message. For example, that, yeah, maybe that person is crazy and completely unfit for a position, and he has too much power, and there's 100% visible corruption all around him, it's not that bad. And again, if that's the only thing you read, you are going to slowly lose interest in it, or you're going to slowly start thinking that that's okay, that there's absolutely no problem with it. In a sense, something as simple as just dictating what people see on the news completely 100% influences their actions afterwards. Because people are not gonna, you know, rile up about a cause, even though if that cause is extremely good, valuable, poetically just, and everything else about it. If there's no interest about it, 
people are not going to get interest about it. Everything starts from people and from the interests of people. And if you remove these interests, you can dictate what people are going to be doing. And that is the most simple and effective way of controlling the mass public. And sadly, it's happening all around us. Now, this may be a little bit of a tangent, what I'm going to go on. But people who are around 30 and plus years old. Do you remember what happened like 10 years ago before the prevalence of Twitter, before the prevalence of Facebook and everything like that? When the news stations were the only things that, you well, when they, they were pretty much the only source of actual news? Well, what happened when something bad happened that a mass amount of people were unhappy about? The people were getting riled up and they demanded justice. Well, maybe it's just me, but I kind of remember usually when something like that happened, when something threatened the order that is. Usually, well, some kind of catastrophe happened. Some kind of shooting, some kind of bombing, something bad Something X. Something that completely changes the narrative and makes people question what's happening there more than what was happening previously. Nowadays, when someone gets called corrupt or whatever, Twitter, Facebook and all the other places just completely snuff out that information so people don't talk about it and it seems no one is talking about it. If no one is talking about it, the news is not going to pick it up because it's worthless. And even if the news tries to pick it up, no one cares, because no one's talking about it. You see how dangerous that is. And also, nowadays, think about it. When something bad happens, when some kind of politician, country or something does something extremely shady, and people are mad about it, what happens? I Recently, I don't know. Previously, I would say that some kind of disaster is going to strike, a shooting or something to change everyone's opinion. Now it doesn't happen. Now the headlines just, well, pretty much disappear because no one seems to be talking about them. In reality, obviously, people talk about it, but there is absolutely no signal boosting. Signal boosting is very powerful. It is also controlling the narrative. And again, do you see how this works? No one's gonna rep uh, no one's gonna be mad about anything. No one is gonna do anything about anything as long as people are not interested in, in things. And now considering pretty much all our uh, life revolves about around the fact that you press uh, the trending tab, so to say, and it's not trending, how will people ever rise up against anything? They won't. They simply won't. And that is the control that you and I, and most almost everyone, is being under. Even if you know this, it doesn't exactly help to avoid it. That's the most scariest thing. Because it doesn't matter if uh, 10,000 or a million people know about it happening. If they can't coordinate to boost the message, to boost the fact that it's not good, that to, uh, to object against it. If people can't coordinate because... Facebook uh, Facebook just uh, calls a group that's trying to coordinate that like bad or whatever and bans them for whatever reason. Nothing's gonna change. You can't do anything. The fight for this type of freedom is already essentially lost, as sad as that may seem. So, this was Cruiser Sin Sin. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the channel. Check out Discord. Check out the Patreon. Check out the everything. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.